Hey guys, what is going on? It's Fenimation here again. So today we're going to be talking about rigging basics. So I'm going to probably do a few um, episodes of this, kind of going into advanced um, rigging. Um, but let's first talk about, you know, what is rigging? Well, rigging is a term used in sailing where you would use the ropes and wires to control the mast, which is, you know, the big sheet I suppose in, in the middle of the boat so you can obviously change the direction at which that boat will travel um, so basically and um, what we're trying to accomplish in terms of CG because it's not actually called rigging in CG it's actually called character animation which doesn't really make much sense simply because you would think animation will be moving it um, but I guess the, the simplest way to explain in a CG or 3D perspective would be um, a skeletal structure of a human. Um, so the bones inside of our body would be represented by the joints or the bones or the rig itself because without them bones, we wouldn't be able to move our body. Even though when you move something, um, your muscles and stuff actually move it. Um, but that's kind of the structure, that's what holds everything together. Without the bones, then you would just be um, mush, really. You, you wouldn't have any structure to your body, so therefore you just wouldn't be able to do anything. So, that being said, um, why is it important that we create a rig? Well, it's not important in most cases. It really depends what you're working on. Um, we're going to go into a few examples. As you can see here, we've got um, an example one and two, and then we've got the start here. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, the very, very basics of rigging, which isn't actually rigging, it's more of hierarchy and how things relate to each other. So if you can imagine that this, uh, these objects here um, make up a human arm. So you can take your own arm um, as an example. Um, you have a shoulder, and when you move your shoulder, if you do it now, move your shoulder up, then your elbow and forearm and hand all follow that. That's because it's attached to a hierarchy. So your fingers are attached to your um, hand, your hand is attached to your wrist, and then your wrist is attached to your forearm, which then turns into an elbow, and then that elbow is obviously... Um, joined to your upper arm and then it's joined to your shoulder. So you can see if you move your shoulder, everything else below that will move with it um, and you don't have any control over that. Um, you could try and move your shoulder up but your other parts will move regardless. Um, however, if you just move your, um, your elbow then your shoulder will move slightly. That's just because of the muscles working but in theory you can move your elbow up and down without, you know, moving your shoulder, even though it will move a tiny bit just because of, of muscles and all that kind of stuff. But you, you should understand the, the concept. So the further you go down the hierarchy, much like you can move your hand without actually moving your elbow. So this is kind of how the hierarchy works. So in order to create a hierarchy inside of Cinema 4D, you can see here, and um, once already kind of set up, we have the example star, and in this example star, this is the parent. So in that parent, we have three children, which is the shoulder, elbow, and forearm. So if we grab the shoulder and we want to um, rotate this, you can say nothing else follows, but we also get um, a weird result. So one of the most important things, um, which is equally as important as the hierarchy, is the position of the axes, so the pivot point in which something would rotate around. So when you move your elbow um, and your hand, your shoulder will pivot around the shoulder area. Um, and much like when you move your forearm and upper arm, it will pivot around the elbow. So that's something to really keep in uh, consideration when creating a hierarchy. So as you can see here, um, our object needs to be, uh, well at least the hierarchy um, needs to be set up, but before we do that we do need to move the axes. So as you can see the axes which is where the manipulators are, so the move tool, you can see it's actually in the center of this object. Now in order to move this axis tool there's, there's a few things you need to do. One you need to make all your objects editable, so I'm going to select them and press C. And then I'm going to grab the shoulder and go over to this icon, which is the enable axis. So it just basically allows you to move 
the axis tool. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to grab the move tool and then I can move this anywhere I want. And once I've finished, let's say I want it here, which isn't really accurate, but let's just say for tutorial sakes, we want it here. We can uncheck this so it turns it off. Then we'll grab the rotation tool. And now we can see that this will rotate from this pivot, which in turn is your shoulder. So that's something that we want. Now, in terms of the elbow, the, um, the axis in the center is fine. And when we go to the forearm, however, we still need to do the same. So I'm going to enable the axis move tool, grab the actual move tool, and then just bring this across. Now, of course, you can be more accurate with this by enabling the um, snap options and snapping it to the edge. Of course, go into autographic views and, you know, make sure you line everything up uh, where it's supposed to be. Um, and that's one way of making sure everything is accurate. So it's in the center, um, but it's at the edge. So that's quite cool. You can also do it with the um, axis tool here. You can, of course, change it um, with whichever axis it is. So you can change it on the X and just hit execute and it'll put it to whichever axis um, that you want. So that's kind of cool. Um, I'm just going to undo that to bring it back to the original position where I moved it to. And then turn this off. So now that we've got the axes set up, which is important, um, we then need to, need to make a hierarchy. So we're trying to say the shoulder is the parent. Now the parent has given birth to an elbow. So what we want to do is we want to grab the elbow and drop it underneath the shoulder. You will see the arrow change to a pointing downward arrow. That means it's going to be a child. So now if we grab the shoulder and we move this, you can see the elbow follows along, which is really cool. However, the forearm doesn't follow along. So this is important to understand because if we grab the forearm now and drop it in the hierarchy um, at the same level of the elbow, so the parent has had two children, which is the elbow and the forearm. So if we move the um, shoulder now, they will all move together. However, if we grab the elbow and rotate the elbow, the forearm does not move. And that's simply because it's not actually a child of the elbow, it's still a child of the shoulder. So in order to fix that, what we need to do is grab the forearm and make it a child of the elbow. So the shoulder is the original parent that had a child which was called elbow. Now the elbow had a child which was called a forearm. So now if we grab the elbow and rotate this, you can see that the forearm follows its parent, which in this case is the elbow. And of course, the elbow will follow the uh, shoulder because that's the parent of everything. And of course, the forearm will follow the shoulder simply because the elbow is following the shoulder. So wherever it goes, it will follow. And that's what a hierarchy is. Um, so it's really important to understand this because you'll be using hierarchy for um, the joints or the bones. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's two different methods. If we go to character, you can see we've, we've got the joint tool and we don't have a bone um, in this um, settings. And that's because the joint and bones are generally the same thing. Um, however, in some applications, they're called bones. Some applications, they're called joints. Um, so don't get confused if I say bones. Um, I'll try correct myself and say bones and joints depending on which application you're using. But this kind of information in this video can be used in any um, free application. So it's just kind of knowledge, really. Um, so we're not going to go into any of this in this episode, um, but I'm going to show you a few examples. So now that we've understood pretty much what a hierarchy is and what rigging is, I'm going to show you an example one. So this is a very simple example. We have the shoulder, we have the elbow, and we have the forearm. So you can kind of see we, we have the same setup here. <clears throat> Even though they're not named, we have the joints uh, which are representing what these are. Um, and what I've done on, on this is if we grab the, of course, the joint, um, which is just named joint, and rotate this, we get the same the same thing the other joints will always follow this joint. However, if I grab the middle joint, which in terms is the elbow, and rotate that, you can see we actually get this um, deformation, which 
um, is used by binding the mesh, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, and then we have the forearm, which isn't connected to anything, so it doesn't matter if you rotate this, nothing is connected to it, so therefore nothing will be affected. So that's kind of a, a cool example. Um, so you can see when we um, use the drop down arrow on this cube, it has a modifier called skin. Now what skin is, is generally that. Um, if you think about a human, we have the joints which are representing our bones, and then we have the skin or the mesh which is representing our flesh. And we don't have things like um, ligaments and uh, muscles and all that kind of stuff um, by default. You can go into the characters and you can add muscles and stuff like that, but that's really advanced stuff. Uh, but for general rigging and stuff, you will be just using joints. Um, and then you would use them joints to bind it to your mesh, which in this term is this object. And then when we move it, you can see it's actually bound. So depending on your structure, because in this in this case we've determined that this is an arm. So we only need realistically three joints to get an accurate representation that this is an arm. However, if we go into example two, you can see this is where things start to get a, a little bit complicated but the results are pretty cool as well. So you can see in here we have multiple bones. We've got a total of 12 bones. Um, and this is, well actually I think there's 13 bones, but you get the idea that there's more bones than we, pre what we previously had, which was three. So if we actually grab the move tool, and this really works well because I do have dynamics on. Um, if I press play, and then if I grab this, um, this parent of everything, I move it around, you can see I get some really cool results. Um, so what I'm going to do is while this is playing, uh, we can mess around with the settings. Now this is of course more advanced stuff, but you can kind of see um, what we're going to be getting uh, if we just play with this. Uh, you can kind of see we get a few more um, settings here. So if I just bring this down a little bit, you can kind of see this is what we get, a really jiggly looking um, leg. So it could be, let's say, an octopus leg. And we don't know that octopus really have bones, it's just kind of controlled. So this is would be a, a good example of maybe using this as a you know octopus leg. Of course you can change the shape. It doesn't really matter what you bind it to, as long as it's got enough subdivisions in order for the um, bones to accommodate um, the you know the flexibility. So you can see here if we increase these settings and decrease and we get some different results which is kind of cool. So yeah, um, so let's talk about this. So what we have here is we have um, these 13 joints and it's the same thing, it's the same example as this one, how we just have more joints. Um, the shape is exactly the same and the skin is exactly the same. Um, however, we just have more joints which will completely change how this um, reacts in terms of one being an arm and now being an octopus leg. Um, so you can see it changes quite significantly depending on the bone structure um, of your, your mesh and your object. Um, what we have here is called um, an IK tag. Um, and this IK tag um, is basically um, solving your animation for you. Like I, I talked about previously, if you move your shoulder up, everything else will follow. That's because it's a hierarchy. Um, what the IK tag does is it gives you the option to, um, of course, move your hand um, and then your elbow and shoulder will follow. It kind of fills in um, the, the midpoint uh, and just makes animating a lot easier. Now, of course, we have um, a few options down here. We have the IK and FK, which is inverse kinematics and forward kinematics. Um, forward kinematics basically means um, you're going to do everything manually. So you're going to move the hand, then you're going to move the elbow, and then you're going to move the shoulder. If you have um, inverse kinematic, it's going to fill all that in for you without you having to actually animate it. Again, we're going to get into that in later episodes when we actually come to actually creating something but for right now I just wanted to give you an example uh, of this and to show you 
um, you know, what joints can actually do and how they will differentiate from having a few joints and having a lot. Um, because we're still using the same principle of a hierarchy, however we're just using something else which is called joints in Cinema 4D to drive um, our animation really. So yeah, uh, so hopefully you guys found that interesting and hopefully um, you know you understood the um, the principle behind rigging and what it's really used for uh, and why you need it. Uh, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. But better yet, you're probably best off putting them on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Fenimation. Um, the Google comments, I mean, geez. Um, but yeah, that's probably the easiest way if you've got a question to put it on there and I will answer it um, ASAP because I generally have um, Facebook open in a in a separate tab so I always get notifications when um, someone leaves a message I don't when uh, you leave a comment so you know if you if you do have a question then you can of course leave it uh, on YouTube but uh, if you want to answer quickly then you um, Facebook is probably the better option um, so yeah that's pretty much it so if you want to see more um, rigging tutorials you know in terms of um, creating a rig for let's say a hand or uh, maybe just a simple character, something like that, then feel free to leave that suggestion um, in the comments again um, and I will create a tutorial on that. So guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.